Brazilian UFC fighter Michael Prezeres, who competed in the promotion's lightweight and welterweight divisions, announced his retirement earlier this month, initially claiming he has to be released. Since then, a little more has come out regarding the second-degree jiu-jitsu black belt's decision, and it's not as simple as first thought. Stay with us as today we're discussing the reasons for Prezeres' decision, plus other news from around the world of UFC. First up, let's take a look at Prezeres' career. Career. Born in Bellum in Brazil in 1981, Trader, like so many other fighters before him, began training in mixed martial arts after watching Bruce Lee movies. A jiu-jitsu specialist, almost half of Prezeris' wins have come by submission. He began training in the martial art as a youngster and never looked back. His first win in the sport came back in 2000 at 19 years old, and his following five fights all came via stoppage wins. His most common method of submission was the rear naked choke throughout his career, and only one of his wins came via KO or TKO, which shows you how competent his ground game was. He built up an impressive record in his native Brazil, and when the UFC came calling back in 2013, he was the owner of a super impressive 16-0 record. He suffered his first career loss in his first UFC fight against Paulo Tiago via unanimous decision, but bounced back with two straight decision wins of his own before running into the ever dangerous Kevin Lee, who himself scored a decision win over the Brazilian. He then went on a superb eight-fight win streak, his most notable win coming over fellow Brazilian Gilbert Burns. Back in 2016, Burns would go on to fight for the title in 2021, while Prezeres would end his UFC career with back back-to-back -back losses. What's your favorite memory of Prezeres? What's up with him no longer being on the UFC roster then? Stay with us to find out. After a pretty impressive run in the UFC, which ended with a 10-4 record, Prezeres announced earlier this month that he would be leaving the promotion after asking to be released from his contract. Initially, there weren't too many raised eyebrows as he had just suffered consecutive defeats and, at 40, alluded to the fact he wanted to focus on his business back in Brazil. At the time, he said, I'll focus on the business I have in Bellum, and who knows, maybe I'll come back to fighting in the future. I'll focus on jiu-jitsu and relax. Back in 2019, Trader had just been beaten by Ismail Nuradiev when a month later he was busted for using performance-enhancing drugs. Naughty boy. He was caught after providing USADA with two out-of-competition samples, which test positive for Boldenon. He was handed a two-year ban, which at the time seemed like it'd be the end for the 5'6-inch Brazilian. However, he did his time and returned to take on Kazakh Savkat Rakhmanov, who surprisingly tapped the jiu-jitsu expert back in June. The latest defeat led to Prezeres to retire, claiming he had asked to be released, but all wasn't what it seemed. It turns out the Brazilian had failed another drug test and was slapped with another ban, this time for four years, which more or less signals the end for the talented grappler. What do you make of Prezeres' cheating? Let us know below. Today in How Not to Behave Around Former UFC Fighters, next. Stay with us. Occasionally, we hear about idiots who wander into combat sports gyms or go professional online, claiming they would wipe the floor with them. This exact thing happened recently at ex-UFC welterweight Joe Riggs' gym in Montana. It leads us to believe that these people are either mentally ill or have some sort of death wish, as it only ever ends in one outcome. The guy in question had claimed he was the best bare-knuckle boxer in the world. As delusional as a claim as it was embarrassing, as Riggs, who boasts a brutal knockout of Melvin Gillard last year in BKFC, has one of his best, decided to give the guy his five minutes of fame. The pair faced off in the ring and it was immediately evident the lunatic was out of his depth as he possessed absolutely zero defense, footwork, or head movement. Riggs did what any self-respecting professional would have and dispatched the idiot, quickly putting him down multiple times within a minute before the fight was stopped. Whenever these videos appear, what goes through these people's minds? Are they truly that delusional that they think they could take on a guy who earns his money by, you know, punching people in the face. It's utter madness. Stay in your lane, trolls. Some potential opponents for Jake Paul next, courtesy of Sean O'Malley. 
So here's Son O'Malley has weighed in on the hot topic of who might be able to bring down YouTuber turned boxer Jake Paul next. And no, it isn't him. He fights in the bantamweight division, guys. O'Malley, speaking on his own YouTube podcast, is considered one of the best boxers in the UFC himself and had his own say on who he thinks would prove the toughest fight for Paul, saying Masada or Kamaru would be the toughest fights for Jake boxing-wise, which most people would probably agree with. According to Sugar Sean, the only way we would see one of these guys take on Paul is if A, Dana was super confident they would win the bout and B, Dana wanted to see Paul lose enough. Paul has recently embarrassed two top former UFC welterweights. One of them, Tyrone Woodley, is considered one of the greatest welterweights in UFC history. Has a good knockout record too. So White would have to be confident in whoever Paul chooses to fight as it's starting to get quite embarrassing for the UFC president even more so if Paul knocked out an active UFC fight there was also talk about Nate Diaz taking on Paul, who himself is a competent boxer, but the sticking point here would probably be the sizable weight difference, and White wouldn't want to risk that. Who would you like to see Paul take on next? Let us know your ideas below. News from Ireland now, Connor is joining us, stay tuned. After putting on some serious muscle recently, it looks as though Conor McGregor might be ready to make his comeback at a much higher weight class. The Irishman has reportedly bulked up to around 190 pounds, so a move even as high up as middleweight could be on the cards. Um, but however, he has been known to gas out even at lower weight classes, so this might not be the best option for the former two-weight world champion. Osa of JRE Podcast and UFC commentator Joe Rogan has had his say on Connor's new appearance, and he warned him jokingly to expect a visit from USADA. He went on to describe McGregor as super Jack before again joking that the anti-doping agency would probably be paying him a visit soon. McGregor himself teased the move to a higher division by captioning his picture with 190 pounds of granite. Rogan also claimed that the pictures might have been a little deceiving as McGregor was clearly in the middle of lifting when the photos were taken, with the host of the world's most popular podcast and saying, if you see a guy's body in the middle of lifting, it's a little deceptive. When you lift weights as you do it, like those bodybuilders that go on stage, they all get pumped, but he looks great. McGregor seems to think that he has a shot at current UFC lightweight champ Charles Oliveira on his return from injury, something which Dana White has been quick to play down. Who do you see him fighting next? A word from Peter Yawn now, don't go anywhere. Former bantamweight champion Peter Yawn has promised to destroy Aljamain Funkmaster Sterling in their upcoming bantamweight title rematch. The Russian didn't stop there either, going on to call Sterling a little whiner, while also promising to make sure the wit is even more impressive. Yawn lost his title after after an illegal knee on Sterling back in March. And the war of words between the two since has been pretty, uh, well, entertaining. Recently, Yawn upped the ante by tweeting, friendly reminder that Olga is my, <clears throat> this time I will destroy this little whiner even more impressively. Before going on to say that Sterling sucks, of course. Uh, this one really does seem personal, and Sterling, of course, did back, making light of the fact that Yawn had messed up the New Yorker's nickname, saying, yeah, F that Olga guy, he sucks. All Joe, on the other hand, yeah, he can't wait to F you up, dirty rat. All right, uh, so who do you see coming out on top when these two finally run it back? I mean, we have to go for Yon, not least for the fact that he looked in control when the pair first met and then lost due to a moment of, uh, well, at least to say madness, but anything can happen in MMA, so Sterling definitely has a chance, of course. Let us know your thoughts down below. As always, thanks for tuning in today, guys, and remember to stop by next time. Why not do us a favor, too, and share this video with with any UFC fans you might have lurking in the depths of your social media friends list. Bye, guys.